Hi, welcome to the U Drive U Network. I'm Kenny Long, and today on this episode, we're going to be talking about some basic accounting and bookkeeping principles. What we want to talk about today are the accounts that you need to set up in your QuickBooks to run a trucking business. Now, to get started, it's important to know that there are four main categories in your accounting system. Those four categories are income, expenses, assets, and liabilities. Now, to get started, let's talk about the big one, assets. Assets are everything. What are assets? Cash. Cash is king. Cash is why we do this. We want to make money, and you need cash. So cash on hand, dollar bills, or better, $100 bills in your hand, that is an asset. When you put that money in the bank, your bank account becomes an asset. Cash on hand, cash in the bank, cash anywhere, that is an asset. Now, other assets are long-term items, long-term, such as any item over $500 that you plan on using more than one year, but stuff that's not consumable. So tires, tires obviously easily cost more than $100, but you could use those up in a year if you have a blowout and so forth. Hopefully they last two or three years. You could technically put those as an asset, but most of the time it's a consumable item, so you're gonna put that in an expense account. What you're really looking for here are non-consumable items that last more than a year and are more than $500. That's a good rule of thumb. Now, computers, equipment, large tools, maybe you have generators or welders or those types of large expensive tools. They'll last you several years, they're more than $500. Those are assets that you want to put into your asset account. Other things that aren't really a tangible, it's hard to, put a, to, to picture it, when you spend money for things like a rebuild, if you rebuild the engine in your truck, that could easily be 20, 30, 000, 40 more or more thousand dollars. That is improving the value of assets you already have on the books, and therefore that also is an asset. All items that you would depreciate are assets. So again, your truck trailer, that rebuild, you would depreciate that over a certain period of time. Those are your assets. Now, next category are liabilities. Easy one, debts and obligations. If you go out and you buy that brand new truck and trailer, you spend 150 dollars to $200,000 to buy some brand new equipment and you take out a loan for it, now you have a liability. So all loans payable. Your loan for that truck, that is a liability. You have an asset on one side and you have the liability on the other and those balance each other out. The other liability that a lot of people overlook are factored amounts, factored invoices, because that factor actually, every time you factor an invoice, the factoring company opens up a loan for you. They advance you that money. So now you have a loan. Now it's extremely important to account for that correctly because at the year end, if you factor a large invoice, you put that cash in the bank, if you don't have something to balance it, now you report all of that cash as straight income. It's very difficult. So it's better to make sure that you categorize all of your liabilities correctly. Now, typically, your, your debts your at, and obligations will balance and your liabilities will balance those loans you took out on your assets. And that brings us to the big one, that is your income. This is how you get that cash, it's where you generate that money. Your income accounts. Gross trucking income is your big one. Gross trucking income is kind of the topic, the headline account, the headline category for where all your money goes. Now that is money earned from transporting freight, but it's also all of the other money you earn from all accessorial pay, detention, layover, truck order not used, tarping, maybe it's driver assist, any of those little things that you generate money from in operating your business go into gross trucking income and that is your income amount. And that brings us to the hard one. Now this is where a lot of people get super confused and that's expenses. Your expense accounts are confusing, but they don't have to be. We're gonna go over them and if you follow along, you'll see there's only 20 accounts. And out of 20 accounts, most of them don't get used all that often. They collect a lot of dust. The big ones are obvious. So let's go through those accounts right now. Car expense, what is car expense? You're running a trucking company, why do you have a car expense? Well, a car expense is expenses for use of a personal vehicle. 
What do you mean use of a personal vehicle? I'm driving a truck. I'm not using my personal vehicle. But you can use a personal vehicle. Let's say that you're at home on the weekend and you decide, hey, I'm going to run down, grab some parts. You go down five miles down the road, you grab some nuts and bolts to use on your truck. That just became a business trip. But you use your vehicle for it. So you can use a standard mileage rate. You want to track all of the miles that you run your car. The purpose of the trip, miles out, miles back on what you were doing. It's important to keep very close records of this and be very careful not to abuse this. In other words, don't go five miles down the road for uh, some nuts and bolts, but that's a 250 mile trip because you went to the beach and you went to visit grandma on the way back. You have to be reasonable about this. But if you make a lot of trips to use uh, to get parts for your business, you can use a lot of personal uh, business miles on your personal vehicle. So keep close records, and that goes in your car expense account. Next are commissions and fees. Commissions and fees are bank fees, ATM fees, com check fees, commissions uh, that you pay to your factoring company. Remember, they're doing you a service. They're advancing you money. That is a commission that they've earned, so that fee goes in commissions and fees. Here's the one that you'll use most often, fuel, oil, and additives. So your fuel, your oil, that's obvious, antifreeze, washer fluid, when those, you've got those bugs on your windshield in the, in the spring, that washer fluid is, is huge. Anti-gel additives, the other one that I didn't put on the list here, DEF, DEF goes in as an additive, and that all goes under the fuel, oil, and additives account. IFTA tax is one that gets overlooked in this account. IFTA tax is actually a fuel expense. Why is that? Well, let's think about it. When you buy fuel at the pump, you are paying if the tax. At the end of the quarter, you will pay possibly more if the tax. That tax owed goes into this account. If you get a refund, that also goes into this account. Now that's why this makes sense. You buy fuel and you pay that if the tax through the quarter. At the end of the quarter, you get a refund. It goes back and refunds against your fuel expense. Your next big account for expenses is insurance. Insurance is all insurance for the business, the truck, the trailer, general liability, auto liability, cargo insurance, bobtail, you name it. If it applies to the truck, it applies to the trailer, it applies to general insurance for your business, then you want to keep track of that. But be careful because health insurance is tracked separately. All health and life insurance is tracked separately from business expenses, and it gets reported on the personal expenses. It is not actually a business expense, and you need to get with your accountant to talk about this because if you're incorporated in, and there are some different ways that this needs to be reported, but it's always good practice to keep track of health insurance separately from your general business insurance. Next is interest paid interest paid, obviously we talked about the liabilities. You might have that $150,000 to $200,000 loan out there, and that is going to balance against your assets. But what about that interest? Where does that balance against? Interest paid. So the interest you pay on those loans is actually expense. So when you get that statement every month or every year, you're going to take that interest and you write that off as an expense in this account. Next is legal and professional, your accounting fees. So if you have an accountant, a tax preparer at the end of the year that does your accounting, if you have a bookkeeper, somebody that maybe comes in and sets this type of stuff up for you, somebody that oversees your bookkeeping, oversees your accounting, maybe files your quarterly or annual uh, returns, those accounting fees go into this. Also, attorney fees. So if you have an attorney that overviews your contracts, looks at your broker carrier agreements, maybe looks at your lease agreements, looks at all of the contracts throughout the year, or maybe you have somebody come into your office, sit down with a consultation fee, and they review your entire business and try to give you pointers, help you get set up, help you run uh, profitably uh, and compliant, that type of consulting fee goes into the legal and professional category. Next, we have loading and unloading fees. These are your lumpers. Your lumper fees go into this account. At the end of the year, you write those off. Now, if you are reimbursed for those fees, those will go back into your income. The reimbursements go to your income and you're offset again through this account for an expense. 
Next is your office expenses. Now, this applies if you have an office. You could use a home office. There's some loopholes and some complications with that, so be very careful. But if you actually rent an office building, if you're running a fleet, maybe you, you don't drive the truck. Maybe you just run it from the office. You have an office somewhere that you're paying for. Those office supplies, the postage, software, you leave magazines out on the front desk for your visitors, all of those subscriptions, everything is goes into your office expenses. Now, one thing to note here, not large computer purchases. Remember, we talked about that in your assets section. A large computer, you might pay several thousand dollars for a computer and you don't expect to buy a new one every year. Because of that, a computer, a large computer, is an asset. Be sure to put that in your asset category, not in your office expense, because you certainly don't want to uh, see an, a brand new multi-thousand dollar computer every year. And frankly, none of us want to have to remember that many passwords and have to set all that up again. So let's make those computers last for a while. Next, pretty obvious one, physicals and drug testing. When you get your pre-employment physical or your drug test done, you go in and that expense goes into this account. This is one that collects a lot of dust because hopefully you don't have to pay a lot of this. Uh, if you have a physical every two years and maybe you get pulled for a random drug test, if you have to pay for it, that goes into this account here. If you have employees and they're working under you and they get flagged for a random drug screen, that would go in here. So this physicals and drug testing, straightforward, easy account. So that brings us to rent and lease. Now, rent and lease has a couple of subcategories to it. You've got your, your equipment, so your truck, trailer, and any other equipment that you may be renting. Now, we talked about assets if you purchased it. If you purchase a truck, it's an asset. But if you are leasing it or renting a truck, it goes here. It is actually an expense. One of the, the ways that these leasing companies advertise these types of deals is that you uh, can write off your payments. Well, that's true. You write it off here as an expense. Now, you write off your asset payments through the depreciation. We'll talk about that in another video. But here, you do a straight write-off, whatever your payment is, and it just goes right out into uh, an expense account, which is rent and lease. I like to keep everything separate, so I like to keep my equipment separate from my real estate. So if you're renting an office, you're renting a storage space, that would also go under this category, but I like to keep subcategories for the different types of rents that I pay. Next is repairs and maintenance. Repairs and maintenance are any repairs, maintenance on trucks, trailers, or equipment that goes into this category. You can keep it all lumped together if you choose, but remember the more detail you put into it, the better your reports can be, and the better your reports can be, the better you can run your business. So you can itemize each one of those things, but repairs and maintenance for the, all of your equipment go into this category. Next is your scales. Anytime you go to a CAT scale. This one, some people use scales quite often. This might get used a lot but I know there are a lot of people that might use a scale once a month. So your CAT scales or the like, any type of scale that you have to pay for, it has its own separate expense category. The next one is supplies. This one is pretty handy because this one can basically be all of your small tools that you don't really have anywhere else to account for them. Uh, expendable and consumable type things. So your gloves, maybe safety glasses, things that you use a few times and then probably throw away. Um, maybe things like if you have a box of nails that you, you keep to, to nail things down to your floor. Any, any of those types of things that are a once and done uh, that are not particular to every load that you do. And this is something that you would use kind of as a miscellaneous. You don't really know where else this little thing goes. It doesn't fit anywhere else. Let's put it in the supply account. Next one is a big one. Doesn't get used often, but it is a big one. Tax and licensing. Remember, everything you pay to the state is a tax or license. License plates. That's probably the biggest one. Most people are paying around $1,600 uh, plus dollars a year for license plates. That's your, your base plate. Any permits, so the state permits, your heavy vehicle use tax, you have to pay $1.50 for the little label in New York. Those types of things goes into tax and licensing. That is a tax. The mileage taxes, so those New York miles that you run, those four cents a mile that you run in the, the state go into tax and licensing. And, of course, your 2290, which is a straight-up heavy vehicle use tax you pay to the IRS. All that 
tax and licensing. Remember, your CDL, when you go to renew your driver's license, license, keyword, you're paying that money to the state, your TWIC card, any other licenses that you have that are business related go into this account, not your IFTA tax. It's a tax. It's confusing. A lot of people do lump it in here. It's not wrong to put it here, but technically your IFTA tax is part of your fuel expense. As we talked about in the fuel tax account uh, a few minutes ago, your IFTA tax could potentially be a return. And that return, it doesn't make sense to put it back into this account that nothing, it doesn't balance against anything. It does balance against your fuel burn. So if you put your IFTA back into your fuel account, that makes more sense. So not IFTA. All your taxes except IFTA go into tax and licensing. Next is tolls and parking. Tolls, tolls transponder costs if you have the best pass, free pass, or whatever it is. Reserved parking, or if you go into one of those places where they have the gate, you have to take the, the, the ticket, and if you're there more than two hours, you have to pay for parking. Those go into here. It does not pay for parking tickets. You do not put parking tickets into this account. This is only for business-related. Travel. Your travel expenses. Now, hotels, showers, airfare, if you need a bus ticket to go pick up something, your Uber rides. If you drop your truck off at a shop and you take an Uber to a hotel, that Uber ride is part of your travel. Rental cars. If you're uh, at a seminar for a weekend, you come to the drive seminar and you rent a car for the weekend for that particular business event, that is a travel expense that's business related. But be careful because that does sometimes overlap into this category, meals and entertainment. If you want to write off all of your meals, everything that you buy breakfast, you buy lunch, you buy dinner, and everything in between, you want to keep a receipt and you write all that off. You can do that. However, the IRS has made it easier and you don't have to keep track of every little thing you do. And typically it works out in your favor to do it the other way. Here, 2020, $66 per day is your write off. You get to deduct 80% of that. And it's easy. Just keep track of how many days you're out away from home, and you get $66 for each one of those days. So if you're out for one day, you put $66 into your meals and entertainment account. Or you can keep every single receipt and track it that way. But you can only use one or the other. You can't take per diem and the receipts. The next one, uniforms and laundry. Now, if you've ever been to a truck stop and done laundry in one of those machines, you will appreciate this because it's expensive and you can write all of that off. If you do your laundry on the road, you can write it off. Uniforms, however, are a little bit tricky. They have to be job-specific clothing only. If you go buy a pair of blue jeans to use at work, you're going to wear those at home on the weekend as well. So, it has to be job-specific. If you go get some t-shirts with your logos screen printed on and some embroidered hats and those types of things, that could go into this category. You're buying it specific to work, but if it's something that you're going to wear in your off time and it's not really specific to work, it doesn't really go in here. Utilities. Now, your utilities are your phone, internet, things that you're going to use on the road, your cell phone. Also, if you have that office, you can write off your actual utility bills. So if you have a water bill, you have a light bill, at your physical office, you can do that. But be careful. If you're trying to write off a home office, you have to really divide out exactly the percentage that you're using for that office. If you have a home office and you only have one phone line running into that home, you cannot write that, phone, that home phone off of your taxes because... That is your primary residence phone. It is not a business use phone. If you get a second line, you could write off the second line. Be very careful with home office. That's a whole other topic. We'll get into that in another show. Next, we're going to talk about wages. Now, if you're self-employed, sole proprietor, wages, anything you earn kind of passes straight through to you. You may not use this category. But if you have an employee, you will. Any wages that you pay to that employee, including their payroll taxes, go into this account. Now, if you are an LLC or corporation and you pay yourself through a payroll, you will use this account even though you're self-employed because you will pay yourself, you'll write off your expenses, you'll claim it on your personal taxes, but your business writes it off as an expense. Payroll taxes are in addition to the actual wages. So it's a 7.5% payroll tax that you have to pay. That all goes into the wages category. Super simple. And guess what? That's a W. We're at the end of the list. Congratulations, you made it through. If you were counting along, 20 expense categories and one income category. 
So that means if you have a 21 tab folder, one of those expandable accordion folders, label each one of those tabs with those accounts and keep your receipts through the weeks, through the month. Once a month, sit down, add it all up, put it in those categories, super easy, and you're done. The assets and liabilities, those are really an annual thing. Maybe when your, your bills come due, you, you can enter those. Those are super easy. The, the ones that you're out on the road with, those are your main 20 expense categories and your one income category. If you're, uh, if you're running under your own authority and you send out an invoice, when you collect on that invoice, now, now you've got an income to put into that folder tab. If you are leased to a carrier and once a week you get a settlement sheet, you take that settlement sheet, you put that in your income tag tab and you break out all of the expenses into the appropriate categories. It's extremely easy. So that being said, in some of the future shows, we will show you how to set up these accounts in QuickBooks or in TruckLogix and how they're going to benefit you and make your life a lot easier. So until then, stay tuned. Remember, dream big, aim high, strategize your plan. You have to earn it because you don't deserve it unless you earn it and only you drive you. Until next time.